All right, if you want to settle in, first question is over here. Hey guys, thanks so much for coming to Comic Con. Uh, you get to keep one of those on the table. Take your pick your card. Uh, my name is uh, Mark Walters of BigFanboy.com, and it's an honor to have the first question for this. Uh, uh, Harrison, I did want to ask you there is the obvious question, though, this is kind of a, a big return to sci fi for you, you know, doing a movie out in space. It's been a long time since we've seen you do that. And it does sort of seem like this character could be maybe like an older seasoned version of Han Solo, you know, like a guy that's now been put in charge of a, a younger generation of the next, you know, badasses in space. What was it about this particular role that made you say, okay, it's time for me to go back up to the start? Um, well, I'll get back to the comment in your, uh, your uh, reference to the uh, Han and uh, Graf being alike. They're, I, I would think, nothing alike. Uh, Graf's a very complex character that is uh, charged with a, an awesome responsibility, who uh, uh, recruits and trains uh, young and are wicked. And uh, really, in, in, in this uh, construction of the Faces a lot of uh, moral issues that are involved in involving involved in defusing uh, young people uh, for warfare, and uh, uh, the, the complex moral issues really are, are part of the Graf's story. Uh, Ender doesn't really face so much the. Uh, issues of morality until the end of the film when he knows what's happening to him. Uh, but Graf is aware of uh, his uh, moral responsibilities all through uh, his part of the story. I think uh, the book deals with a lot of uh, very complex uh, issues of uh, social responsibility and and the, the moral issues that one faces when one is part of a military establishment. I was just delighted to be involved in, in a, a film with such high ambition, such talented people. Uh, uh, I think uh, uh, Graf is a much more complex uh, character than, uh, than uh, Hansel. So. <laughs> <laughs> I never said that. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Far left over here. Uh, question for Asa and Haley. These are characters I've admired since I read the book. Uh, what did you love about them and how cool is it to play these characters? Um, yeah, I read the book. I'm a huge fan of science fiction, so I had a great time reading it. And Ender's character, yes, the film is a science fiction epic, but um, to me there's a lot more to it than that. The novel and then this character, one of the reasons it was so intriguing to me is because of the complexity of it. And me and Gavin talked a lot prior to shooting about where we wanted to take it, and we talked a lot about Ender's character and the constant eternal struggle that he's facing throughout the film. His development is apparent, and it's it was really intriguing for me, and we had a good time experimenting with it. Haley? Um, something uh, that I loved about the project as a whole was the fact that uh, it had such a huge fan base. Um, for me, sort of creating a backstory uh, for Petra was also interesting because you're introduced to her uh, a little further into the story. Um, but one of the most exciting things is sort of experiencing uh, the excitement that everybody around us has. Uh, it's been such a great experience, and we're so excited to, to share it with you guys. Hey. Okay. Hey, Lynn Wolf from Taiwan. Um, I just wonder if you guys get a chance to check out the uh, fan experience set up exclusively, uh, you know, for this event. And um, can you just kind of walk us through different rooms, and how is it? 
This question is for Harrison and anyone else on the panel that would like to answer. Um, the anti-gay views of Orson Scott Card have been getting a lot of attention. Yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, the anti-gay views of Orson Scott Card have been getting a lot of attention since the promotion of this film began. Were you aware of Card's work with uh, anti-gay organizations before you began working on this film? And does it at all change how you feel about working on Andrew's game? The question is for me. Yes. I'm so grateful. <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, none of Mr. Card's uh, concerns regarding um, the issue of gay marriage are part of the thematics uh, of this film. And uh, uh, he has written something, I think, that is uh, of uh, value to... Uh, um, to us all to consider moral responsibilities. Um, I think uh, uh, his views uh, outside of, uh, of those that we deal with in this film are not an issue for me uh, to deal with. Um, uh, and uh, so I have really no opinion uh, on that issue. I am aware of his statements uh, admitting uh, that uh, uh, the question of, uh, of gay marriage is a battle that he lost. And he uh, admits that, uh, that he lost it. I think we all know uh, that we've all won. Um, that humanity uh, has won. And uh, uh, I think it's the end of the story. Thank you. Uh, hi, this message, or 
Let's try this question for uh, Bob and uh, Gavin there. Uh, when making this film, uh, how far ahead are you looking for uh, home entertainment releases, bonus features, uh, commentaries? Are, are you thinking about these things while you're, while you're making the film itself? I think producers have to think about these. I was just a very good film. I was hoping to survive this one. Think about the next one. <laughs> well, go ahead. You know, Comic-Con is about sharing sort of the, the behind the scenes and the experience of how we come to this stuff. So we're very conscious of trying to get as much material just to show how much fun we're having and sometimes we're not having so much fun. Just to kind of catalog what's happening. I think it's a value. In a way, I wish there had been more of this kind of stuff when I was uh, uh, growing up. The idea that you can make a way for yourself in film school merely by Checking out the bonus features of, <laughs> of a DVD is, is fantastic. And now we all have cameras, I'm sure. Have we got all your pictures for our DVDs? Okay. <laughs> uh, we're, we're very happy from the beginning. Hopefully it'll, it'll be something fun to check out. Hello, everyone. My name is Connie Brown. I'm with The Last Magazine. Um, as you mentioned, this is a very ambitious project with very complex characters. In what ways did you research and um, process your work in, in order to identify what the characters you played on the screen? And what part of them did you take with you while you were working on this project? Um, for me, having, having novels to refer to is always helpful. I've written a few films that have been added adapted. And as an actor, the amount of resources and things you can gain just from reading the story as well as the script are uh, so massive that it's something which is you just can't put down. Are we all the um, I would say uh, again having having a novel to go to is so helpful. It's an extra 200, 200 and something pages of just you know ideas and clues and uh, just so many things you can pick up on, whether it's written about your character or the other characters, there's so much, so much there and so much to play with. Um, and for me, this was actually sort of my first film that I had to do a lot of physical training, which was a lot of fun for us. We went to space camp, um, we learned how to march, we learned how to salute and learn different cadences. Uh, and um, it was just, I mean, from day one, it's such a great experience. Harrison, right here. Uh, I, you know, you've had such a great success doing sci-fi, uh, you know, the action genre and so on. But a lot of times these movies, the benefit of them is they're, they allow us to talk about social and moral issues and if you just did a straight drama, you kind of wouldn't accept as an audience. So I was wondering if you could just kind of take a step back and look at Andrew's game. What do you think we're discussing? What kind of uh, conversations can we have from this movie? Although, you know, obviously in a piece of entertainment. Uh, for this movie, I think it was very pressing. And uh, I have to I think that the novel was very pressing. In, uh, in recognizing something that we now have as a reality in our lives, which is the ability to wage war uh, at a distance uh, and to, uh, uh, to do the business of war um, somewhat emotionally disconnected from it. And so the morality of, uh, of a military commander and the military command structure, the morality of a society uh, which raises uh, a military and wages war, are the uh, moral concerns of this film, and they are something which we are wrestling with uh, daily in our lives. <clears throat> the issue of uh, um, uh, inter Planetary warfare is the science fiction aspect of it, uh, but uh, what gives it such emotional uh, tone and reality is that these are the concerns uh, of our everyday lives now. Uh, drone warfare and, uh, and the capacity uh, uh, that we have uh, technologically is uh, one 
one part of, of, of the moral package. The other is uh, the use of young people in the in the business of war, which has always historically been the case. Uh, the youngest of our of our uh, youngest and fittest of our of our cultures have always been the ones who were uh, first in line for warfare. And the question of using even younger people, uh, the, the book, in the book, uh, and their wicked starts out at seven years of age. Uh, uh, in this case, uh, I think wisely, um, the, um, uh, the has been changed to be a, a young person uh, closer to matching pieces age 12. 13. 13. Uh, uh, was a wise choice. <clears throat> but the character that I play is, uh, is responsible for manipulating uh, young people in service of uh, some perceived uh, need of, of, of humanity as a, as a whole. And no matter how you try and uh, wrestle with the questions of, uh, of um, warfare and um, the military, the more you realize how complex uh, these issues are and how much uh, uh, how much attention they deserve. So I think it was, uh, it's really important for us to visit these questions, not only in the daily news and then dismiss them, but in, in, the, uh, in our emotional and civic lives. I think we only have time for like one or two more questions. I know back here with someone. Uh, good afternoon, Mr. Ford. Uh, I was wondering if you could talk about your experience as an actor working on this film with Sir Ben Kingsley. Uh, it was great. <laughs> uh, uh, despite his uh, uh, his moniker, uh, <laughs> the sternness of him, uh, uh, there was a real guy there, uh, a, a yeoman actor, and uh, very maybe kind of guy uh, who I vastly enjoyed uh, getting to know. I had not known him before. I had the pleasure of, uh, of uh, uh, working with him as an actor. It was, uh, was uh, a real treat. As was, by the way, the pleasure of working with these young people who are enormously talented, dedicated, and uh, um, devoted themselves uh, to the, the telling of this story and who also possess uh, a surprising craft understanding and skill uh, surprising to me uh, for, the, for their ages forgive me for saying uh, but uh, enormously talented young people uh, I give credit to them and I give credit uh, to Gavin uh, because casting is so important in these things, and it was a delight to be involved. Last question. Hi, my name is Rachel Oscar, um, futurepreviews.com, and my question is, for all three of you, what was your favorite trait about your characters, and are there any major moments in the film that you would have personally done different than your character? Last part. Are there any? <laughs> As I said, uh, are there any major moments in the film that you personally would have done differently than your characters? Well, for me, one of the things that I really enjoy playing with Vivenda is how he's constantly struggling between his brother and his sister. And he's almost like he's got two sides to him. I've always wanted to play a darker character in this film and in the novel. As moments where he isn't a glorified, he isn't a glorified hero, as with all of it, as with every human being, we have a dark side, which I had a lot of fun playing with him. 
Um, I would say um, that my character is very, um, very strong and independent um, because she has to be. She's put into a world where she doesn't know who to trust and who not to trust. And, you know, in most cases, there's nobody to look to. Um, and I... I love that in a way because my character is one of the very few girls in the battle school and the only girl in, um, in the army that she's in. Uh, she's constantly working to sort of maintain the respect from the guys around her. And I think that uh, when she meets Ender, there's this uh, really truthful connection between the two of them that comes from sort of uh, finding their, finding their way, finding their place. I hate to make you guys laugh, but we are actually running over to the panel, so we gotta go.